do I pray the luminous mysteries? I get this question almost every single day. And anytime I talk about the rosary, people always ask, what about the luminous mysteries? Taylor Marshall, are you for or against them? And do you pray them? First of all, what are the luminous mysteries? In 2002, Pope John Paul II proposed, did not mandate, five mysteries for the rosary. Called them the mysteries of light, also called the luminous mysteries. And they are the baptism of Christ in the Jordan, which we know is true. It's in sacred scripture. The miracle at the wedding feast at Cana, where he transubstantiated water into wine, also elevated matrimony to a sacrament. That's in the Bible. It's good and wholesome. Love it. Number three, the proclamation of the kingdom. This is Christ teaching and preaching the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, and all the parables. All biblical, all good. Love it. Number four, the transfiguration of Christ on Mount Tabor. Biblical. Great. Number five, the institution of the Holy Eucharist on the night in which he was betrayed. All five mysteries of light are good, true, orthodox, and wholesome. And yet, when it comes to the luminous mysteries, I pray them and I don't pray them. And I'll explain what that means. These mysteries of light actually predate John Paul II. There was a priest, he was a Carmelite priest from Malta, and is, he's actually canonized. He's St. George Preca. And St. George Preca, in 1957, so before Vatican II, he composed the Mysteries of Light and popularized them as a chaplain. He himself, of course, doesn't have the authority to add to the rosary, but he's a canonized saint. And like I said, the Mysteries of Light are biblical, orthodox, and true. Now, when it comes to the Luminous Mysteries, personally, and let me just say, I'm a dad on a webcam in a room over my office. I have no authority. I'm not the magisterium. I'm not a priest, a bishop, not a monsignor, not a cardinal or a pope. I'm just a dad on a webcam talking to y'all right now on YouTube or Spotify, iTunes, however you're listening. I pray them if I'm with a group and people say, let's pray the rosary. And they say, today is Thursday. Let us pray the luminous mysteries. I will pray with them. However, personally, I don't count it as my rosary for the day. I pray the rosary every day, God willing, by God's grace. So if I pray the rosary with a group in the luminous, I will pray another rosary, either the joyful mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, or the glorious mysteries. So I consider the Luminous Mysteries as a chaplet. There are dozens of chaplets out there. There's Chaplet of the Holy Face. There's the Franciscan Crown. There's the Chaplet of St. Michael. There's all kinds of chaplets that are used on the rosary beads or variations of the rosary beads. And that's how I see the Luminous Mysteries. I don't think they're a danger to the faith. I don't think they're unorthodox. It's all in the scripture. Um, they derive from a canonized saint who was a Carmelite, prayer for Carmelite, St. George Preca. So... All those boxes check off. But personally, and with my family, we do not pray the Luminous Mysteries. On Monday, we pray Joyful, Tuesday, Sorrowful, Wednesday, Glorious, and then Thursday, Joyful, Friday, which is Day of Penance, Sorrowful, Saturday, Glorious, and then on Sunday, moves with the season. So Advent, Joyful, Lent, Sorrowful, Easter, Pentecost, Glorious. That's how I do it personally. Again, I don't think they're unorthodox, but I don't see it as the rosary. Now, you may be saying, well, yeah, but John Paul II was the Pope and he added this, so you're disobeying a Pope. That's actually not true. Uh, John Paul II proposed it. And he even acknowledged that this proposal broke the symbolism of the rosary because the rosary, its official name is not the rosary. It's the Psalter of Our Lady. Psalter meaning the book of the Psalms. The book of Psalms has 150 Psalms on, in it. 150. And if you take the th three traditional sets of mysteries, five, 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 that's 15. And there's 
a decade. There's 10 prayers in each. It's 150. So Our Lady, when she appeared to St. Dominic, she didn't say, I give you the rosary. She said, I give you my Psalter. Let me read it to you. She said, when she appeared to Dominic, Dear Dominic, do you not know which weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Dominic answered that she would know better than him. Mary responded, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering ram has always been the angelic Psalter which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my Psalter, end quote. Mary wants us to preach and pray her Psalter. A Psalter is 150 Psalms. And the Rosary traditionally is 150 Hail Marys, not 200 as the John Paul II edition would lead us to have. 150. Now, John Paul kind of admitted this, kind of granted this. Listen, this is from John Paul II and his apostolic letter, Rosarium Virginis Maria. He says, quote, John Paul II, the selection was determined by the origin of the prayer, which was based on the number 150, the number of psalms that are in the Psalter. I believe, however, that to bring out fully the Christological depth of the rosary, it would be suitable to make an addition to the traditional pattern which, while left to the freedom of individuals and communities, could broaden it to include mysteries of Christ's public ministry between his baptism and his passion, end quote. Notice how careful John Paul II is. He says, look, I know the original symbolism is 150. He says, but I think to bring out He says, I believe, however, not I mandate as Pope, that to bring out the Christological depths, it would be suitable to make an addition to the traditional pattern. So he's saying it brings out something special. It's suitable. It's not required. It's not mandated. And he also says it's left to the freedom of individuals and communities. In other words, you can't, he's not mandating it. And he's saying that people can't be mandated to use the Luminous Mysteries. It's suggested, not mandated. So if anyone says, oh, you don't like the Luminous Mysteries, you're disobedient, you're schismatic, you're against the Pope, no. John Paul II, in his actual document on the Luminous Mysteries, says it's up to each person and community. He's not mandating an addition. He calls it a proposed addition. He's making a proposal which we are free to accept or not accept. So John Paul II didn't mandate it. It breaks the symbolism of Our Lady's Psalter, which is what she called it. There's also the symbolism of John 21, 11. And in John 21, 11, we read, Simon went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, 153. And although there were so many, the net was not broken, end quote. So there's 153 Hail Marys, there's 150 in the Mysteries, and there's three in the intro. So there's always been this mystical relationship with Peter's net in 153, with the Rosary and Our Lady giving this great weapon, she calls it the battering ram, of the Psalter, of Our Lady, the angelic Psalter, and the 153. So there's all this symbolism going on. When you add the Luminous Mysteries, you break down all that symbolism. Also, A fourth reason is Mary didn't give us the mysteries of light. She could have said to to Dominic, hey, here's the 15. Oh, and then I'm going to give you an extra five. At Fatima, when she appeared and told us to pray the rosary every day, she could have at that time said, and for the 1900s, I want you to have five new mysteries, the mysteries of light. But she didn't. It comes from a saint, St. George Preca. It has approbation by a pope, John Paul II, that a saint and a pope are not the mother of God. It's different. And then I think the fifth reason why I personally don't pray the Luminous Mysteries, although I will in a group setting if asked to, um, is that it's somewhat divisive. Even having to make this video shows that there's a divisiveness in it. Ever since the 1960s, we've had to have a new mass We've had to have new sacraments, all seven sacraments, new exorcism prayer, 
uh, new canon law, new catechism, new ordination rite, and now a new rosary. And every time you add some, oh, a new canonization process, every time you add something new, you create division. You create two camps. When you bring about something new, you're going to have people who want the new, and then you're going to have people who don't want the new. They want the traditional old one. So when you introduce something new, you just created two camps. Whether you like it or not, it happens every time. And I don't like division. I see the benefits of the mystery of the light. I like them. I'm not opposed to them. But by adding them into this rhythm, now you have religious orders that have a division in it, families that have a division in it, parishes that have divisions in it. When you're on a pilgrimage, some people want to do the luminous, some people don't care to do the luminous. You have this little extra controversy in Catholicism that doesn't need to be there. Now you might say, well, just accept it. Just accept the luminous mysteries and there wouldn't be this division. The problem is, is even John Paul II says we're not required to do it. So we're going to have people who want the luminous, people who don't. And I'm just saying, I'm going with it old school. I'm going to do it the way the saints did it. 150 Hail Marys, 15 mysteries. We've done it that way for 800 years. I'm just going to do it the way we've done it for 18, for 800 years and retain the language and the symbolism of Our Lady Psalter. So that's my answer. Do I pray the Luminous Mysteries? Personally, no, I do not. I follow the permission of John Paul II that I have freedom not to do it. If I'm with a group of people and they say, let's do the Luminous, I'm not a jerk. I smile. I'm happy to do it. I pray them, but I don't count it personally for me as Our Lady's Psalter. Again, just my opinion. People ask me all the time, so I'm laying it down. That's my opinion. I'm not a member of the magisterium. I have no authority. That's just how I personally navigate it. If you like this video and you think it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please share it on Facebook. And if you're new, please subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell. You'll be notified every time I make a video or go live. And make sure you do pray the rosary every single day. If you don't pray the rosary, you're not on the team. If you want to uh, check out my book, Rosary in 50 Pages, uh, you can do that. It also has a little explanation on Luminous, kind of what I just said now in that book, and teaches you how to pray the rosary and the history of the rosary and the miracles of the rosary and all kinds of wonderful things packed into 50 pages. All right, make sure you are praying that rosary every day. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ is the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty. God bless. Godspeed. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about the rosary, I have a whole playlist on the theology of the rosary, why pray the rosary, also how to pray the rosary in English, how to pray the rosary in Latin. So click on that rosary playlist on the right side of the screen. Before you do, please subscribe to this channel. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. God bless.